Welcome to my science tutorial. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to determine the purity of an organic compound, and we are looking at four ways. Now, number one, um, let's go back there. Determine color. All right, so we'll talk about boiling point. Boiling point. And then number two, we we'll talk about melting point. Sorry. Melting point. Then we we'll talk about TLC. TLC stands for thin layer chromatography. And then we we'll talk about refractive. Refractive index. Good. So what we have here is um, a beaker and we have some water in there with some impurities. So what is inside here? The white is water, so let's call it H2O. And then the magenta is our impurity. All right, so this is heat. We're applying heat and trying to cause this water to boil. Or you can take it as a solution of any other organic compound or any pure isolated organic compound. So let's say this is our beaker and we are heating this solution. Now, when does boiling occur? Boiling occurs when you have the atmospheric pressure being equal to the vapor pressure. So as we heat this, it begins to the particles in there, the molecules it gives to leave there as in a form of vapor, in a form of vapor. So the particles live in a form of vapor. And when that is happening, it generates what is known as vapor pressure, and that pressure is pushing upward. It's pushing upward. Now, in the opposite direction, you have the atmosphere exerting the pressure on the surface of the liquid, so that pressure is coming downward and it is caused by the atmosphere caused by the atmosphere all right so at the point where you have the vapor pressure so we said this one is atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure and then this one is vapor pressure All right, so at the point where we have the atmospheric pressure or vapor pressure, let's say vapor pressure, to be equal to the atmospheric pressure, that is the time that boiling will begin to occur. Okay, now what happens is that the impurities here, which is the magenta color, what they do, what they do to the boiling point is that they are going to increase the boiling point. Why? Because Anytime you heat a particular solution or let's say pure water, anytime you heat pure water, the molecules begin to live in the form of vapor, they gain kinetic energy and they try to leave. Now the impurities in there act as a blockade, so they, they are going to cause some kind of stampede. So when the molecules try to escape, they will collide with the impurities and that will reduce the kinetic energy. So you will need to apply more heat. And if you apply more heat, that means the temperature also will increase. So they will need to, at the, the boiling point to be elevated. And so it is known as boiling point. Boiling point elevation. Boiling point elevation. All right, so impurities causes hot boiling points to increase. Now let's talk about melting point. Now melting point, let's say this is a crystal of an organic compound, which we may call, let it be aspirin or whatever um, organic compound it is that you isolated. Now in any crystal, you have the molecules arranged in a kind of lattice. Let's say um, if you take 
sodium chloride is salt crystal. You may have sodium plus and Cl minus arranged alternating each other in a particular way. Now, when you have an impurity in there, it's again an impurity here. It's an impurity. A impurity there. What it does is that it disrupts the crystal that is so there is some kind of intermolecular force between interatomic or intermolecular force between this particular one and this particular one here and then and the other way around so what actually held them together is this intermolecular forces it may be in form of van der Waal force hydrogen bonding or whatever be it but once you have an impurity in there it is disrupting the the force of attraction between this one and this one now when you apply heat when you apply heat to this crystal so let this be heat when you apply this to this crystal before it melts that means the intermolecular forces holding the atoms or molecules together has to break so when you have an impurity in there it already weakens the force of interaction between the two molecules or the two atoms that is inter if it is interatomic bond it weakens that structure so what happens is that you will need to apply apply less heat for this particular molecule or crystal to melt. So what happens is you have um, you have this crystal that is, and then you have one a part of it being impure. So one thing is that the first thing we have to note is that one melting point decreases. melting point decreases and number two you have this part of the molecule or the crystal melt first because the, the forces of interaction here are weaker compared to this part so let's call this part A and let's call this area let's call it B so because this place will melt early and then this one will melt at the actual melting point will say that the boil the melting point rays will become wide so Melting point range. Melting point range becomes becomes wide. It doesn't have a narrow melting point. So that is one thing about melting points. So the moment we have a wide melting point range or the melting point being lower than expected, then we know that there is an impurity in our organic compound. All right. Now the next thing we can use to tell whether an organic compound is pure or not pure is thin layer chromatography. Thin layer chromatography is a, is a chromatographic technique that uses a TLC plate. That uses a TLC plate. Uses a TLC plate. So what we have here is what we have here is a T. Um, sorry, let's clean this. All right. So what we have here is our TLC plate. TLC plate. Now the TLC plate is basically an aluminum plate that is being coated with um, silica or silicon dioxide so you have the plate coated with these white things that the silica dioxide on the surface of the plate and then we have what we do is to make a line here which we are going to call our origin our origin and then this one here is to help us determine our solvent front all right so what we do is we spot we spot the center here or you make an X in the middle and then you spot it so let this be let this be our spot now if this is the spot what you do next is to put this plate in your development tank in this case it might be a beaker 
it must be a beaker and the beaker contains your solvent the beaker contains your solvent and your solvent has to be below the origin The solvent has to be below the origin. Now the solvent, the solvent system is basically um, a polar, a polar solvent which may be mixed with a non-polar one in a particular ratio. So while the solvent rises up this plate through capillary action, when it reaches here, it picks the spot the where you where you drop your organic compound on the origin. It carries the organic compound along the place as it rises up by capillarity to a particular spot, to a certain spot. All right, so it may drop the spots along this place. Now, what you have to know is that the silicon dioxide, which is coated at the surface, is also polar. So it is an interaction between the solvent and the 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 organic compound if the organic compound is very polar and your solvent is also very polar it interacts more with the solvent and so the solvent can take it all the way up here and while it goes up it reaches it's the solvent for reaches this mark when it reaches this mark you take it off the development tank and then you can use um, a UV lamp or an iodine tank iodine tank Iodine tank or UV lamp can be used to spot to to identify the spots on the plate. Now, when you take it out, it might be invisible, but when you use the UV lamp, it shows you the spots. Now, if you have just one spot on the plate, then it tells you that your organic compound is pure. Now, if you have more than one spot, that tells you that there are some form of impurities there. So TLC, we said TLC is thin layer thin layer chromatography thin layer chromatography now aside thin layer chromatography one other thing we can use to tell whether an organic compound is pure or not pure is the refractive index so this is number three and number four, we have refractive refractive index. Now the refractive index, the refractive index is basically um, the speed of light in vacuum compared to the speed of light in, in a particular medium. So you measure the speed of light in vacuum relative to the speed of light in that in the medium of that part particular organic compound it, it may be a solution of it so um, yeah it may be a solution of it so what happened is that known organic compounds some of them have well known or published refractive indexes which which you can compare to what you you have experimentally to tell whether an organic compound is pure or not pure so these are some quick four ways to tell whether an organic compound is pure or not pure thank you